Hey everyone and welcome to Bird's Eye View Comics Art. I am here today prepared to ink page 21 of issue 3. Um, this video is to uh, kind of like reach out to people who are trying to, you know, do comics and uh, learn techniques and so forth. And um, I felt like I needed to show people my background and how I, you know, produce the pages to my comic book. And if you haven't read it already, please reach out to me in the comments, um, go to my website. There's a bunch of links under my profile. And you can check all those things out and reach out to me. Um, I don't have a store yet set up, but I am working on that. And I've also reached 55 subs. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys are awesome. Uh, without you, you know, it wouldn't happen. You know, I really appreciate it. And I wouldn't have fan base. I wouldn't have people to check out what I'm doing. Um, so thanks for that. And I also encourage those who have not subscribed or made any comments or liked, please, it helps. Um, doesn't just boost my... Um, encouragement it also helps with the algorithm on youtube and and it helps other people see what i'm doing and um i really would appreciate it uh we, you know as artists we all gotta support each other and as all people who just love you know uh pop art and comics video games everything uh we're on community and we should you know try to help each other out uh, i definitely try to you know, subscribe to different venues that I enjoy as well. Um, so please leave a comment and check things out. So we're going to start off first by um, working on this area of the book, uh, of this page here, not this uh, the book, but the page here, um, because this is the most elaborate part. I like to work on the most elaborate part of the drawing there are some pages that can be a lot simpler but because of what's going on here this is a waterfall area here in the rocks we have my one of my characters jade here in, in the background and in the foreground we have sapphire about to face off in a spar so um some people ask me oh first of all before i start inking let's um one of the things I use is a Japanese um, brush pen. This is a really nice, fine pen that you can use to get fine lines like this, especially for the for the water part, because you don't want it to be super thick, but you also don't want it to be super thin. You want to make sure it looks realistic, and you want the pen to be able to, you know, kind of drag down the page without you know bleeding over and everything and it can be nice and fine so it feels like more organic than a regular pen so one of the things that uh people always make comments about with my art is my layouts um one of the things that i do for my layouts uh well let's, let's talk about like how i come about with these pages the ideals that come so in issue three, the first half of the book is scripted and scripted by my son, Anthony Bird. He scripted um, pages one through 13. Um, and then I took over after that to finish the rest. Um, you may have seen some of the pages here on my pages, on my, sorry, on my um, channel. Um, but once again, he scripted pages one through 13. And after that, I took over. Now, after that, there is no script. I go in and create the panels and the layouts off the top of my head. Um, uh, because I know where the story is going because I'm the artist and practically the writer at the same time. And, you know, we've kind of talked back and forth about where the story is going. I have an idea of how 
things are going to turn out. So I don't write a script. I know the actions that's going on. I know what the dialogue is going to be. And so that's why I um, I go right to drawing the page. Or sometimes I do, a, you know, I do thumbnails and sketch it out. And um, that's how I come up with it. So I do... I don't do a lot of scripting, to be honest. I don't. The first two issues actually is totally unscripted. Um, it's scripted, but not scripted, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I mean. I'm saying like it's scripted in my head. And then when I go in and I do the lettering in comic draw, I um, already know what's going on in the panels. So I just go ahead and I write in dialogue uh, on the spot. And then I hand it over to my wife, Elizabeth Bird or Beth Bird, to do the um, the editing. So she'll edit the the words and stuff, make sure everything flows, sounds good. She's a, a writer as well, so um, she knows how to make sure it sounds right. You know, correct any grammar mistakes or anything like that. So that's how that happens, and that's how I kind of figure out how everything is going to be by just kind of go off the top of my head. I mean, I, th I take several days sometimes, or maybe, you know, I already know where it's going to go. So I just go ahead and draw it out or I think it out for a little bit and think out the layouts in my head uh, without a script. Um, so that's how I do that. So this, like this page particularly, you know, it's a continuation of another page, obviously. But I wanted to get kind of an establishing shot between Jade and um, Onyx here. They, they're they going to be talking in this panel. Jade jumps and prepares to jump in. And we kind of have a giant time script here, a time skip here. Uh, I'm going to put some dialogue here to say a couple minutes later. later uh, we have Jade here, close up, extreme close up, and, and Sapphire's extreme close up. Uh, extreme close-up and so I use that to kind of split that the page in half have the waterfall in the background of the setting and then draw jade and sapphire here and then down here if you can see that we have a action shot of them coming at each other to prepare to fight so I thought all of that up and I actually didn't do thumbnails for this one. Um, actually, the last couple ones I have been really doing thumbnails because I kind of already know. And I'm also on a time crunch for myself because this issue has been taking a lot longer. Didn't expect it uh, due to life things. And, <laughs> you know, if you're alive, you know that life can sometimes, you know, throw you a curveball when you're trying to. You know, just live. So here I'm just using a Japanese brush to, you know, do the water. I want it to little, look very organic and flow. So that's why I wanted to use this brush to get the water to look the way it does. So I'm just lightly going across the page. It doesn't have to be real dark. It just give you an idea of the setting so you can see where they are and what's going on without a ton of details and so we have the waterfall here when the water hits you know from the waterfall it hits the water it creates like a cloud and bubbles and stuff like that so as it goes down so we're just going to keep doing this here giving it you know a little bit of texture and I, I often don't draw water. And this I think this is the, like the first time I actually drew my characters in water. So like right here, Jade is stepping, is inside, is, you know, her foot, her foot, feet are in the water. So you know, because I'm not going to be using color, I have to give the effect of transparency. So her, her foot can be seen through the water, but you don't see the details in their toes or anything like that. You just see an image of her foot. In the water so that's how i realize uh not realize but you know that's how i convey that they're step they're in water and of course here you can't see sapphire's um 
the rest of her outfit and her feet in the water. But <clears throat> you can see that part. So I pretty much got the water down. Pat, I'll probably come back to this and add some more texture. It might not because it's actually just coming out pretty good. So I also had a, um, I work at Columbia College Chicago and I um, was at a graduation uh, handing out uh, name cards for graduation. And I was working on a, um, as I'm sitting there, I'm just working on a drawing in my, in Procreate of Harley Quinn, a picture that I had on my wall for years at work. And so now that I'm getting more into drawing on the computer and coloring and everything, before I used to just be pencil and ink, pencil and ink, pencil, pencil and ink, and that was it. And people kept saying, oh, you got to try digital coloring. You got to try digital coloring and digital drawing. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm I'm traditional and traditional all the way. And um, I got a little bit of a taste of the digital. Um, a little bit in, in um, comic draw. I, you know, I played around in it with that. Um and I still wasn't convinced. I was still like, eh, I don't know. I couldn't nail it the way, you know, I've seen other people do it. I, I'm still working on it. I'm not like super professional in it yet, but I'm getting better, you know? And that's one of the things that takes practice. Uh, the great thing about social media now is that you can look up artists, whether it be independent, whether it be uh, you know, uh, people who are already out there, uh, professional artists, not to say that independent p people aren't because we are professional, uh, when we make our sales on our books and, and so forth. What I'm saying is like people who are, um, already in the industry, who are in the big part of the industry. So you can definitely learn for those people. But when I was a kid back in the day, you know, we had to get magazines and, um, find references that way there was no internet uh, and i'm showing my age <laughs> with that a lot of people might be on here oh my gosh he's old as heck i'm 45 by the way um but during those times we didn't have internet it wasn't instant access to references so um in order to be able to get a reference, you had to either be the reference yourself or have somebody else do the reference for you or um, you had to go in a magazine. But now you can just go online and find all this stuff. So that's the beauty of the uh, of, of the Internet and social media and, you know, Google and everything. So I definitely recommend those who are out there trying to be comic book artist. So what the story was is that I was at this grad thing and a young um, student came and saw that I was working on the, the Harley Quinn drawing. And she was very interested. She just was like, oh, you, um, I like the, what you're doing. It looks really nice and everything. And I was like, oh, thanks. You know, I'll give you my information. You can check out stuff i'm a comic book artist and i had a couple of issues left in my bag of uh tooth and nail so i um i gave him i gave him to her and i said you know thank you for checking things out and i added her on instagram she added me and you know just establishing those relationships with people getting to know people and you know teaching each other how things how you do things, because not everybody knows how to do it, you know? And I am the kind of person who loves to help people be artists, give them pointers, and teach pe different people different things. Um, so, you know, she wanted to know, how do you get into the comics and everything? And by the way, for this drawing, uh, with this part, I'm using 
a double sided pen. This part is a thick marker and this one is a pen. So that way I can switch back and forth at any moment to do the shades and the dark areas and thin lines. So uh, she asked like, you know, how did, how did I, you know, get influence and what, what, how did I get into the industry and how did I do these things? And I said, well, anybody can do it now. You know, anybody can produce a comic book or any kind of art now, especially with social media and put it out there. You know, we record stuff and we, there's a lot of printers out there that'll, you know, you, you know, you got to pay obviously, but a lot of printers out there that'll, you know, you pay and get your book out there. You put, you know, you, you can self publish. You can definitely self publish and it's, it's costly, especially if you want to do a all colored issue. That's very co costly. And my books aren't full colored inside. They're colored on the outside and some of the art, some of the, um, uh, gallery work is colored, but, um, the, most of the book is black and white. And so the point I'm getting to is that, you know, my influences have been manga artists. Uh, and so Tooth and Nail is kind of a, kind, kind of manga-ish. You know, I, I try to not be too Japanese in how I tell my stories and everything because I, I don't 100% know everything about the culture, but I know bits and parts. So I take the bits and parts that I do know and produce it. And I think kind of Kevin Eastman and Pe Peter Laird, I think that's how you say his last name, did with the Ninja Turtles. You know, they took elements of what they knew about Japanese culture and created the Ninja Turtles with that. And so that's kind of like what I'm doing here. But my influences were, you know, Masashi Kishimoto with Naruto, um, uh, uh, Noble Hero Waski, uh, Roni Kenshin, and uh, Joe Maderera for Battle Chasers. So what I was saying with the student to find three artists and I learned this from another um, artist to to find your style, to find out where you want to go with your comic, what, which way do you want to do your book? You know, do you want to do it manga style? Do you want to do it traditional comic book style? And go from there. You know, that's how you kind of figure out where you want to go as a comic book artist. And so I pulled from those three sources and kind of like melded them together in my own way and created Tooth and Nail and produced Tooth and Nail. So I definitely recommend that you find, you know, three artists that you're very influenced by. And I also told this um, a person that I was on Messenger with that reached out to me and um, and um, explained to them the same thing, that if you have certain styles or certain ways you want to do things, look at the people who have done it, especially the people who are like masters at it, and learn from that. And you don't have to copy them, but learn from them. Take bits and parts of what you learn, like certain techniques, you know, certain inking techniques, certain penciling techniques, certain layout, page layouts, all those type of things. And um, it'll gradually change to what you want it to be. And then as you keep going along, you won't even have to look at those artists' work anymore because you have become your own type of artist. You you establish your own way of, of how you want to want to create. And you give a shout out, obviously, to those people you learn from. From a triangle sucker, right this line, and then eventually you will establish your own style and 
definitely go on YouTube. Go on YouTube and go on Instagram and find artists that do certain genres. And it's so easy just to type stuff in and find people. And just look at their art. Study it. Art is a thing you study. It's not just, oh, I can draw. Oh, I'm, <laughs> you know, look at me, mom. I can draw. It's, if you are really serious about it, you can be, you can be even more than that. You know, you can be more than just, oh, I just do it for a hobby. No, you can, you can create your own worlds and your own stories and put them to life. And bring them to life. This eight is running out and that's another pen that I have to show you guys, which is really good. A lot, many of you might already know about this pen, these pens, but these are the Micron. This is a 08. It's semi-thick. If you see the, I don't know if you can see the tip on the video, but it's sort of thick, but thin at the same time. And I can get a little, I can get some nice lines here with that. But this one is going a little dry. And I don't like that because what you end up doing is you'll constantly have to keep going over the line because the, the pen is drying out. So in that case, I some, I'll switch over to a fountain pen, which you can do a lot of between, you can go between thick lines and, and white and uh, white lines with that. I usually like to use the Micron for this type of stuff though. And this looks like it might be running out soon too. I gotta look at the ink on this. Probably should have reloaded all this stuff and find out all my stuff was working right before I started doing this video. But it's all right, I got a lot of different pens I can work with. But fountain pens are good because you can, you can go from thick to thin. So like here, uh, this is running out. I might have to reload it but with, with these type of pants you can go from thick to thin um so i'll just switch over to a pilot fine liner which is pretty thin but not too thin so i can still get some good lines here if you can see that So we do the rest of Sapphire's outfit here. Draw her tail. Oops. Made a little bit of a mistake there, but you can always thicken the line a little bit. Since it's in the back, it can play like a little shadow and his material, so you know you can kind of get away with that. So I draw a little bit of details and material because things get scratched up, you know, in real life things get scratched up and wear and tear on them. Put a little bit more detail on her hilt of her blade, the handle of her blade. Shadow the hand here since it's like deep in shadow. Sapphire is, uh, if you haven't read the comic yet, when Sapphire is about to draw her sword, when she draws her sword, Sakura flowers fly around her as part of her ability. She has the wind ability. But we haven't really talked about that in the comic yet. I'm getting to that pretty soon about the their abilities and how they draw from nature. And as animals, they're cats. So I wanted to touch a little bit on the um, elemental aspect of their abilities and powers and everything. And Sapphire, she's got the ability of wind. And she's also a, a beauty so that goes into the, uh, the sakura flowers that she pulls from, from nature. And they materialize 
when she's about to pull her sword out. So, the other thing I wanted to touch on uh, is movement. Movement in a on a page. Um, when drawing a page, you want to really focus on the movement of the actions that are going on. So whether you have a script or not, you want to know, excuse me, you want to be aware of the movement that's going on the page. So, you know, we have establishing shot of Jade and Onyx. We move to Jade jumping there, and then we skip time and go here. We move, you know, you want the eyes to move, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, you want the, 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 reader's eyes to move on the page and flow and feel the movement going through so you know and that's why i like to have the scarves i like to have the hair to show movement in the characters in the leaves to show movement in life in in the characters and on the page so that you can actually feel what you're reading and what and looking at as you go through now this page is it's a lot going on per se uh with detail but not a whole lot going on character wise and a little bit of movement in the story um you know if you were to just pick up this book and read look at this one page without any dialogue you will probably be a little bit confused from this panel to these you might be uh, and, I, and you got to also think about that too. You know, if it's you, if you're going by a script or you're not going by a script, with, when the writer, you know, usually when a writer is writing a script, they're explaining what's going on in each panel on the page. Some writers write out the entire page, um, telling you what's going on on the page. So it totally depends on the writer uh, and the artist's relationship and uh, how they work with each other. Um, so this page, I think I mentioned before, is unscripted. It's just me, you know, so I know the movement of the page without a writer. I know what the visuals are going to convey and communicate on this page. Now, as for my audience, I try to keep that in mind when I'm drawing this and the writer always has to do that too that they have to be keep in mind of their audience that they understand the story that's flowing through the page and that also plays into the movement of the panels and the page overall and then you also got to think about what's going to happen in the next page and like I said if, if the story is already written out is already mapped out for you to do that but if you're like me if you're kind of like making it up as you go along i have to be aware of how the visuals are going to go from here to the next page so i have to make sure that it makes sense when you go when you turn the page and so because it's in my mind of what's going on in, the, in those pages i also have to be aware of how I convey that story to my audience so that they will understand what I'm doing. I have to, to be able to tell the story with the visuals. And that's the key to being a comic book artist, being able to convey the story through the visuals without dialogue. And even though, you know, some artists might be working off a script they still have to be aware of how the story is being told based on this script through the visuals that's very important because that's what we are we're visual storytellers writers are writing the the story you know they're telling the story through words we tell the story through the art 
and that goes back to you know ancient times when you know you read on the cave walls or in Egypt they were telling stories through the through the images so as comic book artists we got to learn how to do the same thing and when these things are printed out you know and everything it, you're already seeing the uh, the dialogue on the pages already and the sound effects and everything but my thing is I want to make sure I'm able to make you feel what's going on there before you even read it all the way because I grew up and I still do when I read a comic book or I, I get a new book or, or a comic book or a manga I look at the pictures first I want to be impressed by the artwork first and that's me that's just me I'm not saying everybody has to do that but you have to be able to catch my attention through your art and I think that's important for a comic book because most of it is artwork most of I mean if you and this is not a gash at any writers I love writers you guys are awesome and I think that you are powerhouses in the comic book industry because without the stories and and the creating the stories of the characters you don't have anything because I'm pretty much writing the story in my head I just don't write it down I just draw it out rather than write it um, but as a comic book artist who's trying to commute, communicate information to your audience, you have to be able to visualize that and be able to convey that through the art. So that is very, very important. Because even with movies, like if you think about movies, you know, there's a script, but what are you seeing most of the time? You're seeing the visuals. Even though those visuals are based on a script, you're not seeing the script. The audience isn't seeing the script. They're just seeing the visuals. So the director, the cinematographer, <clears throat> special effects artists, they have to be able to convey that information visually of what the person wrote here i'm using fabric castell a b this is like a, like a thick sort of marker brush this is kind of worn out though but this is good for like really black areas <clears throat> solid black areas And here I'm using Sharpie. Ah, there we go. I'm, I'm finally getting a pen that's not really drying out yet. I've been doing so much digital stuff. My, <laughs> my, uh, my inks and my inks have been missing me. And so they've been running out on me. Another key thing, of course, and I even still struggle with this, I have to constantly look at reference, is your anatomy. People will call you out on your anatomy faster than you can, than you can do anything. They will call you out on your anatomy. And I wouldn't say my anatomy is perfect, by no means. By no means. I'm trying, I've been reading books, I've been studying, I go online, and I make sure that I try to be as good as, with my anatomy as possible. <clears throat> also, use reference. Use reference, reference, reference. It's so easy to get reference now. Go online. If you got a specific scene you're trying to draw, but you can't visualize it, use a reference. Go on there and find something that is like what you're trying to get it. And you don't have to copy it. You just use it as a reference, get an idea of that, and um, I guarantee you it's going to work out great for you. 
Because I, I think, and I'm just presupposing here that some people probably don't want to do that because they feel like they're copying. But everybody uses reference. Everybody uses reference. Reference is important. And this is another Faber-Castell SC. It's pretty thick, almost brush-like. Give it a little bit of more organic feel to it, but not quite organic. This is her, um, the ribbons from her uh, scarf here. I'm going to darken this in a little bit more. Just in these black areas. All right. So we're almost done with the characters in the foreground. In this video, I, I, as a reminder, I'm not gonna do this whole entire page uh, on this video. I'm going to, um, the rest of it, I'm probably gonna do a time lapse, but I just wanted to talk to you everyone through this couple minutes of, of um, doing this page and just showing my technique. Um, so I've kind of covered most of the basis of what I wanted to talk about uh, with everyone and how I create a page and create comics. And I hope that really helps everyone because this was a long time coming. You know, I've been I've been reading comics and manga for a long time. I grew up. I lived on the west side of Chicago, and uh, my older brother had comics in his room in a little drawer. And I would go in, and uh, I had to kind of rent them out <laughs> from him because he didn't want them, you know, destroyed or lost so i had to come in he had a little sheet of paper and i had to write down that i took a certain book and what i read a lot as a kid was x-men um avengers power man and iron fist west coast avengers a little bit of conan Cerberus, um, like the big ones, you know, Marvel stuff. Can't remember what I think Conan was on the Marvel at that time too. Yeah, I think Conan was. Um, not uh, 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 the Mar the Marvel stuff of Conan. I don't know if um, Frazetta did those. I can't remember. Uh, if Rosetta did the the Marvel stuff, but it was comic book, you know, based. So I don't think Rosetta did the comic book stuff. I can't remember. I know he had a lot of paintings and and whatnot. But I remember my brother having the Conan stuff and that stuff, man. That was rough for a kid to be reading because <laughs> it could be really violent. I loved it. So I read a lot of that kind of stuff. So I th grew up on all, grew up on those things, and of course cartoons that I grew up. Transformers, a uh, <clears throat> little bit of GI Joe. I wasn't a big GI Joe fan. Um, watched a little bit of He Man, Voltron. I was a big Voltron fan. Um, A lot of classic 80s stuff that's a lot of that stuff made a huge comeback in the 2000s huge comeback i was happy about that especially with ninja turtles and voltron and transform oh, definitely transformers transformers got a huge uh comeback and i'm a huge 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 transformers fan you'll probably see in my video before this all the transformers i have in the in the background I have over a hundred and something. And I know people out there get way more than me. They're probably like, a hundred? You ain't got nothing. 
I don't collect everything. I only collect the stuff from the 80s that I really like. Um, I don't do the Michael Bay stuff at all. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Michael Bay movies at all. Um, and then the different variations of, you know, comic book based stuff. I don't collect any of those. It's all 80s, like, Transformer stuff. And they bring back, they're bringing back, like, so much awesome stuff. They have an 80s, 86 line that they're doing right now. And I'm like, yes. So I'm doing, I'm getting a lot of those. And then they're uh, doing um, more stuff from the, the cartoon series. And it's under, a lot of it's under the kingdom and the, uh, uh, the Cybertron series that they hit on Netflix, but they look exactly like the stuff I drew up, grew up with. So I just, I've been collecting those every time I get the chance and try to pick up things that I didn't have when I was a kid. I wish I had a lot of the stuff that I had when I was a kid, but I don't have it anymore. But I made up for it. <laughs> I, got, I got stuff and then some. So right here, I'm just drawing the, the rocks along the shore, <clears throat> inking that up. I'm going with a, a, a sharper marker, um, a thicker marker for that area. Because this little marker, I'll be, I'll be doing this forever. I don't want to overdo it. Because my hands aren't what they used to be. They hurt a lot. So I can only do a little bit at a time because I'm I'm no longer a young buck. Alright, so we're gonna go in with I really love this one. 1.5. It's pretty thick. It doesn't look like it. It kind of looks like the other one that I showed, but it has a different like texture to it. But I love this one. The problem is with this is when you go in and erase the pencil after you put all these inks, it fades out. Like it, it, it not necessarily smears, but it fades out when you erase. So the eraser is picking up the marker and taking it off with the pen. And it's India ink. This is made of India ink. India ink. And it's, this is the only one that really does that. And it's really annoying when I had to erase the pencil. Uh, so now I just go in and erase certain sections where the pencils are. I don't try to erase the entire page of the pencil. And this is getting a little dried out too. Dog on it. Sometimes it's good to dry out a little bit because then you can get a little bit more texture. Especially when it's like organic stuff you know you want to try to make sure that it doesn't look too you know um solid because in shadows and rocks and everything they're usually not so clean because they're organic so you sometimes you want to have a little bit of that scratch there let's do this side here gonna do the black here first and then go back in with the thinner pencil <clears throat> see it's drying out but I still can get a little better texture with that to make it look more realistic I just don't want to have an outline around it because then it looks like it's it literally will look like it's separated from the character, but you want it to, you don't want it to completely be perfectly in line with the character. Cause like right here, I sort of got Jay, like a lot of black here on black. So you kind of lose a little bit of that, but I'll show you how I can separate that when the ink dries as I'm doing this area. Uh, I use a gel pen, a white gel pen. 
to do that and to do some texturing. All right, let's do a little thin pen. Just like I'm gonna have to be going to the store and get some more updated pens and markers. I thought I had did that already, but because I was doing so much digital stuff, I literally got addicted to doing <laughs> digital after all these years, I'm saying, no digital, no. And now I, I can't stop doing digital. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not gonna go totally digital with um, Tooth & Nail. I wanna keep Tooth & Nail to look or very organic. Uh, so that's why I wanted to remain with the, you know regular pencils and inks because I wanna keep that organic look. Because um, computers are great, you know, but it takes away the organic look of the drawing some people might disagree with me with that and they might be right but from my perspective I, I really feel like it takes away the organic feel of the drawing <clears throat> now in most cases this will probably be cut off I did it anyway just in case here I didn't fully do it uh, so when I go in and I um, I do the paneling, I do the cropping. This probably will get cut off. I drew it in anyway, just in case I decide to keep it. Now, hopefully this area, I don't think it's totally dry yet. Um, so while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do these real quick, these close-ups of Sapphire's beautiful eye. I love drawing eyes, especially cartoony looking eyes or anime manga type eyes. I don't draw like, you know, the big, big eyes, you know, in like manga and anime. Uh, I, I can't. If I do it, it just looks goofy. I haven't quite nailed that yet, but I really don't want to do that, to be honest, for my style. Uh, like I said, I'm... I'm pulling from anime and manga uh, as def definite influences but not completely taking it on uh, there are some things that happen in my books is very manga and anime like uh, like expressions and uh, effects but I'm not totally committing to the uh, manga animatics uh, aesthetic so see how I did Sapphire Sapphire is a little bit more elegant in her look so I try to keep her look looking elegant with a thin pen but when I do Jade her lines are going to be a little bit more thick because she is not as elegant as Sapphire She's a little bit more rough around the edges. Um, not that she's like dirty or something like that, but her style as a character is a little bit more rough. And these two have a rivalry with each other. They, they're teammates, but they have a rivalry. And I definitely pulled that from manga anime, Naruto, with Sasuke and, and Naruto and their rivalry, their friends, but also their frenemies, let's put it that way. Let's get the eye going there. Draw her little nose. And most cases I don't draw in the uh, panels anymore because I go into the computer and do that and then clean all that up whatever's outside the line or not in the line, I clean that up uh, in comic draw. So I don't have to bother going and draw. I just, I put it there mostly for a, uh, for a guide and where in placement where everything is gonna be. Finish this up here. This is a good pen too, the F uh, Faber-Castell. It's very good. So it's a lot like the um, the eight 
but not as thick as the eight of the uh, Sakura pen, the Microcon. But it's still a good detail type pen where you can get a lot of details in. So I use two different pens for two different type of characters, two types of pens, thick for one character and thinner. So that's a good way, you know, that's a good way to kind of um, get a feel of your characters too, is the way you pencil them, or the way you ink them. They should be a little different from each other because they're different type of characters, so they'll have different lines. And that's how you can convey that kind of information about those characters. Um, it's kind of like with the Ninja Turtles. I, I think Raphael is more rugged, you know, and um, as the years have gone by, he's changed because in the beginning, the Ninja Turtles kind of all looked, alike, looked the same uh, besides the colors. Um, but I think as time went by, they started changing the look of each character to kind of match who they are. So Raphael would be a more of a little rugged, more looking character. Uh, Leonardo would be more clean and more, um, you know, balanced. Um, Mikey, Mikey might be a little bit more goofy looking and Donatello would have that intelligent look to him. So when I started creating Tooth and Nail, I wanted each character to have that type, type of different looking character. So what I was saying before, and I think the ink is dry, I use a, and I don't think it's totally dried yet, I don't, and I don't know if you can see that, but I use a gel pen, and I had a 10, this is an 8, I had a 10 that dried out, but you can put that white there to kind of put an outline a little bit around the dark area so you can be able to see. Um, you can show that separation between her and that background. Because I put a lot of black there, you miss where her arm is because she has black in her arm. So that's a good, that's the one thing you don't want to do black over black, white over white, because uh, you, you lose the image. You totally lose the image. And then I use the white here to do some more texturing here. So, so it's rocks. So I'm gonna do little cracks you can use those areas those are kind of like gray there and it really makes those areas pop using this I'm telling you when I get this 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 pen and I started using it I started using an issue too and man did it change my perspective just from this white pen because you can really go in and, and those black areas and put some detail and, and character into even the backgrounds or clothes or anything like that. But a friend of mine told me, don't overdo it. <laughs> and um, I had to pull back on it because I was using it for like everything. And that's the thing you want to have balance with those type of things. So here we got waterfall in. So you might want to put little divots here. You might not be able to see it. But just give it a little bit more movement in those areas. Put some bubbles without the black circles around them that you probably won't be able to see. Only I could probably see this. Because it's really light. And it's not my... my uh, the pen I usually use for this area. And so the last thing before I end this video, I wanna show you guys that I do, is I go over the outline of the characters. Another technique I learned from a friend so that these characters pop. That was too much black, but that's okay. I can fix that later. 
So you do an outline around the characters. And not everybody does this, you know. Some people don't do this because it's it, it, it becomes very cartoony looking. But with Tooth and Nail, I can do that because it's got a cartoony, you know, anime manga look to it. So I'm doing an outline around the main characters so they can pop off the page. So you see how that pops off the page? It makes a big separation, a nice separation between the main the characters in the foreground and the background. And I just love that. I love that. Uh Joe Madureira does that in Battle Chasers as well. He does like a nice thick back, thick outline around the characters. And manga and anime do it too. Yep, Sapphire really pops. So you can really see characters leap off the page because this is a very detailed detailed area detailed area of the page so if you don't outline a character you might lose a little bit of it i don't think i did before i did this but even better when you put the old outline around it because you really see the character pop off that page and because it's in black and white and no color it's kind of essential that you do that in order for the characters to really pop off the page. I'm gonna do a little bit of Sapphire's hair here. I kinda wanted to keep that thin, but it's kind of melding into the other panel, so I wanna make sure that it, you know, it looks separated. keep that thin because remember Sapphire is a little bit more elegant whereas uh, Jade is a little bit more rougher, rougher around the edges so she has more of a rugged look to her so I would have to say that wraps that up um, it's almost been an hour but I really want to thank you all for showing up for this please make comments in the comments area uh, please check out other things on my page, um, um, not my page, but my channel. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and come back for more. This is issue three, page 21. I'm almost finished with this. But if you would like a copy, please leave a comment. Contact me on various uh, social me media outlets that I have. I have Instagram. I have Twitter. I have Facebook. Please, please, please. I have a website. Check everything out. See if you like it. And we can work out um, getting you a copy of the books um, until I get a store. So that's me signing off. I thank you so much, everybody, and have a blessed day.